Look, I get it, we're coming into the winter season and new shoes are releasing literally every single day. Which ones are worth your time? What trends can we spot to help inform our choices? And can we get new sneakers specifically designed for winter wear with extra features like more ruggedized designs or Gore-Tex powered water resistance? I'll be showing you a few pairs that I've picked up recently that I really like and a huge curated list of recommendations and cool releases and collabs you can consider if you're looking to buy new shoes this season. I'll be categorizing these into four broad trends to help your thinking as much as possible. This is Armin van Helden here, let's take a look at some sneakers. How could I give you winter sneaker recommendations without having a winter performance category? No one wants their favorite kicks getting ruined by rain or mud, so these are all brands and models which have proven popular recently, but with specific winter ready features. New Balance specifically have really hopped on this, the 2002R and 1906 are both models that I really like and they've proven pretty popular with others as well. And now they're available in specific winterized versions, the 2002R has a ripstop version of the protection pack turning the deconstructed suede into tough water resistant ballistic nylon and the 1906 R Cordura pack does exactly the same thing. I love my 1906 that I picked up earlier this year. They are surprisingly well ventilated though, so they definitely suit warmer weather, and that suede upper is not something I'm that keen on taking out in the rain, so a pair like this would really cover me for those colder months as well. I also really like the 610 generally, and they did a version of this using a Gore-Tex upper for added water resistance. In my opinion, these are a little bit ugly compared to the others, but I do still think they're a viable option, and if you really like this model, but not this specific colorway or the Gore-Tex treatment, then check out the Joe Fresh Goods and Amine collabs, both of which came out recently. And if you're not familiar with Amine, definitely check out his recent album with Kate Trinada. There's some pretty good tracks on there. Even more recently, there's been a ruggedized CAYL version of the 610, which looks really nice that just dropped, and a slip-on version with Tokyo Design Studio, which makes the shoe look completely different. Really seems like the 610 is gonna be a big model going into 2024. This isn't just a New Balance video though. Recently, New Zealand brand Hoka have been getting a lot of mainstream attention and they've got some Gore-Tex specific models which are going to be perfect for winter. I really like the Kaha 2 GTX. It's a real full featured performance boot. Super rugged, perfect for winter, and I really like some of the colorway options as well. I actually bought a pair of Clifton 9s a few months ago for running in. I do a mix of road and trail running, something like 15 to 20 miles a week, and I feel like these have been holding up pretty well. They're pretty comfortable in a mix of terrain, and there is a Gore-Tex version of this if you like the idea of this model and you want a specific winter one. Outside of the GTX specific stuff, they recently teased a currently unnamed model, which I think looks really cool, and a clear example of the brand consciously designing a more fashion forward silhouette rather than something that's purely performance focused. Judging by this teaser, it also seems like there's a Nicole McLaughlin collab planned, so I'm really looking forward to seeing a little bit more of that. We stand Nicole over here, she's done some really cool work in the past, so. I'm sure it's gonna be good. New Balance and Hoka are pretty on trend right now. If you want something a little bit more timeless, there's also a Gore-Tex version of the Vans Old School. Exactly the same design that you know and love, but in a slightly more winter-ready version. Hard to hate on these if you like the style and it's a pretty affordable way of getting a Gore-Tex shoe. At the more premium and heavy duty end though, check out the Adidas Terex Swift R2 GTX. You guys are always recommending the Terex line and this season I think the lineup is looking pretty good. These being the biggest and chunkiest boot, but they've got a few which are closer to your average sneaker as well. Something I thought was interesting over the last few months is Timberland working with a variety of different designers on their Future 73 program. We talk about a cold wall a lot and the Samuel Ross version took a futuristic take on this boot, which I'm always in favor of. The clot ones I thought looked pretty cool as well. Could see these going super hard in a real rugged military fit. The final pair to release though is from Rayburn. Chris is the former creative director of the brand. We've covered them a few times in the past. Their focus was on sustainability, so they're using natural materials where possible and a final product intended to be disassembled more easily so it can be recycled at the end of its life. Hopefully I'll get hold of a pair of these so keep an eye out on TikTok or Instagram for a little bit more. Of course winterized sneakers do tend to have that performance ready look about them and that's great if you like dressing like me but chances are your style might vary and even if it doesn't just because it's winter doesn't mean you need to be head to toe in Gore-Tex the entire time. So we've got some other things to talk about. Silver shoes are totally having a moment right now. This was partially kicked off with with the Adidas Wales Bonner collab, even though they weren't actually the most popular colorway of that release. And they've since
since been joined by a few other models like the Country OG. The A6 and Cecile Banson collab was also a good example of this whilst reworking their shoes into a Mary Jane silhouette. I'm definitely a fan of this colorway and this idea. I like how they can be styled not just as a Y2K retro inspiration sort of thing, which yeah, is super popular right now, but also you can lean into the inherent futurism of silver as a color. On that basis, I picked these up, the A6 Gel Kayano Legacy in silver, and despite being a brand new release, I didn't actually pay full price for them, thanks to this video's paid sponsor, Top Cashback. Let's face it, new sneakers are only getting more expensive, and I'm all in favor of bringing that cost down, as well as helping to get money back on the things that you are going to buy anyway. Top Cashback works on so many UK retailers, not just sneakers, not just fashion, but basically anything that you might want to shop. I bought these off Hip Store, I got something like 5.8% cash back, about eight pounds, and that kind of money really does start adding up over multiple purchases. Once you've made an account, basically the only thing you need to do is click a top cashback link before you shop at a retailer of your choice, they pretty much do the work for you. Or if you're a power user like me, you can install the browser extension and whenever you go on a supported retailer, you automatically get notified that you can get some cash back. Getting money back on purchases really does start adding up, especially if you're copying new releases like these. And if you sign up using my link in the description, you'll get a 10 pound bonus for shopping at any supported retailer. Do that, search for something you like in the search bar, hit the get cash back now button and shop as normal knowing that 10 pound will hit your account within 14 days. Well worth it if you are gonna pick up some new shoes this season like these. I was honestly super impressed that these were a general release. I bought the GmbH pair, the collab, uh, a couple of weeks prior, which are these ones here. I love how green these are. I love the shininess of the pattern, but um, they could maybe be a little bit more wearable. So the silver I thought would really accomplish that for me. Um, and these are definitely more wearable, but they still look and feel great. They're super comfy on foot as well. So yeah, super impressed with these all in all. That silver sheen is super obvious, but still has that slight tonal variation. So it really brings out the three dimensional nature of this shoe. And I like how this vented section here kind of splits the sidewall and the toe box, like the joints of a mech or something. Really nice shoe in my opinion. I could see these being a go-to for me over the next season. And again, if you are thinking about making any big purchases, definitely check out Top Cashback via that link in the description. And again, thanks so much to them for being paid sponsors of the video. I am all in favor of different ways of shopping smarter, and this definitely fits into that category. Silver sneakers though, it's a wave. The recent Asics and Kiko Kostadinov collab came in a pretty cool silver colorway, the Salomon ACS Pro as well. Although it has always had these little silver lace holders, the more recent colorway release, they just thought, yeah, we'll just turn everything silver, why not? Nike P6000 as well, a recent model also comes in a silver colorway. I feel like that's definitely a shoe designed for mass market appeal and wearability, so no coincidence that they brought that out in a silver color. And related to this 3D printed sneaker brand, Fused are sending me some of their Arian sneakers to check out in translucent, which is kind of silvery in a way. Definitely has some relationship with this trend and that's another model I'll cover in more detail once I get hold of them. I love futuristic stuff and the whole lunar core space explorer type look, so I'm always gonna be in favor of a trend like this. This silver wave has one foot in retro and one foot in futuristic, but there's no doubt that retro inspired sneaker shapes are pretty popular. Although a lot of influencer types have moved off the Samba by now, they have been featured in about a million pieces of content. But if you go into your average UK sneaker store, they are still absolutely everywhere. Hard to deny their continued mainstream popularity, but you're not here to be told to buy Sambas. You want the new Samba, the cooler Samba. And I could plug my Y3 marathons again, which which I picked up at half price and in my opinion are a kind of interesting and more technical, vaguely futuristic take on this trend, which still has some relationship with those original Adidas silhouettes. And this season there's a fun green colorway, which hopefully will also hit the sales. But instead, I'm gonna remind you that there are so many classic Adidas silhouettes. You do not have to restrict yourself to the Samba at all if you like this kind of look. So if you wanna be a little bit different from everyone else, you have. Guam, Malmo, Gazelle, Yabisa, Handball, Spezial, AS520 Jeans, Superstar Ripple, the cool ones with the fire on, SL72, Campus, Country OG, Army Trainer, this new size pack looks super nice, Nike Cortez, Onitsuka Tiger, Mexico 66, the list goes on. So many options, you'll find things which fit this style and present performance options and silver colorways as we discussed earlier. I'm not trying to say that any one of those in particular is the hidden gem that's about to go totally viral and I'm a 200 IQ trend analyst for pointing out that things like the Samba exist. Ultimately, they are part of the same 
game a trend ecosystem that already exists, and that's exactly the point. It's the classic Adidas style that's very much on trend, without you having to feel like you're just copying everyone else, or you've done something that's already been done to death. They give you colorway options, differences in fit, materials, minor aesthetic variations which might appeal to you more than the de facto option. This is far from the only look though when it comes to cool retro looking shoes. New Balance of course are super big in this area, something like the 992 is the classic. More recently, as we mentioned earlier, the 2002R, there is in fact a upcoming Jound collaboration, which is going to be a surefire hit if you want a classy and easy to wear shoe, and a Stone Island collab in a nice understated colorway and a very wearable silhouette, which is pretty different to some of their previous releases. A few months ago, I bought a pair of Vomero 5s, which I think work great for technical but not super futuristic looks. And these ones in anthracite as well, they are not a pure black, but they're slightly faded. They are actually a very dark gray, and that I think works really, really nicely for more retro inspired stuff. I also think they look great with slightly wider fitting pants as well. So definitely something that fits that intersection between things that I personally really like and things that are very much on trend at the moment. Loads of Amero colorways out right now. In my opinion, this is definitely one of the better ones. The Asics and Needles EX89 also caught my eye. Although this isn't my style, I do think the contrast stitching works well and it feels very true to the Needles brand. Their DC collab has a similar finish and again, clearly riffs on retro sportswear, this time skateboarding specifically. If you want a more obvious early 2000s throwback though, look no further than the Adidas Campus and Superstar collab with new metal band Korn. It has the oversized squishiness of a pair of Etnies or DC skate shoes and they're gonna look perfect poking out of a nice relaxed pair of jeans. I was always more a Deftones, Linkin Park, System of a Down kind of fan myself, but no doubt there's gonna be some people out there who are very hyped to have Korn back in the public consciousness. It does come in a cool box as well and I'm a sucker for cool boxes. We've discussed how big ironic fashion is and you can bet ironic sneakers are just as big. The Crocs and Shrek collab of course was a big memorable moment here. They did a collab with Hershey's as well and Reese's Pieces. The Crocs cowboy boots, I mean basically anything with Crocs at this point is an enormous meme besides the Salehe Bembry stuff desperately holding up the fashion end of the Crocs brand. Mischief of course have been pretty big in this area, absolutely destroying people's social media feeds earlier this year with the big red boot. They more recently and more quietly dropped a collab with Reebok doing a nine stage Insta pump, which Insta sold out. I love this extrapolation of early 2000s technology, which was just all about experimenting with weird stuff and just putting it out there regardless of how well it actually worked, just for the sake of experimentation and doing something new. There's also the AC2 sequel to the AC1, which turns the full medical boot into an easy to wear slider. I like this idea of taking something super functional, this medical piece of technology, but flipping it around into something that is actually designed to be mega comfy and mega easy to wear and put on and off. I think it's a great evolution of that idea. I mean, who is realistically gonna be buying and wearing the AC1? I don't really see it, but the AC2, it's just that perfect level of silliness and wearability for me. I was super tempted to pick these up, but the combination of taxes and shipping really put me off there. But uh, let me know if you think I should just bite the bullet and do it anyway. I'd still say approach clothing like this with some caution though, for all of the popularity the big red boots seem to have, they restocked them a little bit after the hype, and guess what, they're still sitting around. You can literally just go on their website and buy them right now. If that's not evidence of the cultural zeitgeist shifting extremely quickly, then I don't know what is. But hey, if you do want a pair of earlier this year's most viral pair of shoes, then you can just grab them. I still like them from a wearable art perspective, but obviously if you're buying something for popularity or clout, I would certainly not be going anywhere near these. And this idea of ironic fashion is one to be cautious of. I'm certainly not gonna recommend that people be buying these kinds of shoes knowing that, well, maybe in a month's time, people are not gonna care as much anymore and you're not gonna wanna wear them. Balenciaga S SS24 came out with the Cargo, a reworked version of their 3XL with a sole just begging to be accidentally stepped on, but more interesting to me, a reinterpretation of the Birkenstock Boston silhouette, but a kind of weird five finger version called the Sunday Mule. It's both slightly disturbing and kind of cool, and it's sort of that balance between ironic silly fashion and a high fashion reimagining of an existing popular product. Speaking of which, this is an entire category, the high fashion reworking or elevation of a 
mass market silhouette. It's something that has been popular for a long time, and I definitely think that's still the case. You could argue this is an attempt to make sneakers unattainable by turning them into luxury objects only the wealthy can participate in and excluding others. But at the same time, I feel like the reverse is also true of these high fashion collaborations giving more cultural value to their mainstream, easily available equivalents. The MM6 and Salomon Thigh High, for example, which finally released, shows a new side to the XT6 as a shoe not just for Gorpcore cosplayers, but something valuable in a high fashion context as well. These releases can change the perception of sneakers like that. For next season, they'll be taking this further with a cross mid, which is clearly drawing more on the aesthetics of performance, and an XT4 mule, which is a fun blend of performance looks and ease of wear, distinct from the standard Solomon slip-ons. If you like the regular XT6 though, the new end collab looks really nice, basically a variation on the orange colorway which came out last year, which I bought and really like. Whenever you see collaborations, an interesting thing to think about is what value each of those brands are providing to the final product. Not just from a design or a manufacture perspective, but from the positioning of the product and how it affects our perception of it, having these different names attached to it. There have been loads of Cray Green and Adidas collabs, but the two most recent ones I have particularly liked, the Stan Smith Split and Full Boost. The former basically cutting the shoe in half and then reattaching it together in kind of a fun way, and the latter extrapolating the Adidas performance tech and thinking, well, if Boost is so comfortable, let's just put it over the whole shoe. Definitely some common ground with the Instapump in that kind of approach, but I kind of like it. And oh look, they come in silver too. I also like conceptually when brands use different materials or design to elevate the standard sneaker. You'll often see Comme des Garçons collabs do something like this. And Japanese brand Hender Scheme is all about using common athleisure silhouettes and reworking them using extremely high quality materials. More recently, I thought this was the case with the A Cold Wall Air Max 98, arriving in this crazy full blue color, as well as a couple of more wearable ones, and flipping a very casual sportswear shoe, the Nike TN Plus, into something much more luxurious by using a full grain leather upper. It's a material and texture you'd normally associate with a very different type of shoe, so interesting to see it applied in this way. And also interesting is how that will age and patina with time, a similar approach to what they did with the Vomero 5. And with that, we are at the end of my curated sneaker landscape for this season. Would love to hear your thoughts on some of these, and more importantly, if you've got any you think I missed or any recent pickups that you really want to talk about, please do add them to the comments. I want this video to be as helpful as possible, so the more recommendations we have here, the better. So please do give me your thoughts, and apologies if I don't sound too good this week, I am sick, but shoes are more important, so we power through, we power through. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like, it makes a massive difference, and thank you so much for taking this little trip with me. We'll catch you in the next one.